Hello, Restore Community Church. It is my pleasure to be with you once again uh, here on this, uh, I don't know what time you're watching this, what day you're watching this, but it is a beautiful June day. I'm finally, it feels like summer has arrived and, and it's just warm again. I can wear short sleeves and be comfortable and not shiver. Um, and once again, I'm excited to be here as we're continuing on in our series of knowing God and knowing Him more intimately and knowing Him more really, more, more factually, factually, bleh, factually about not what does Dustin say about God, what does this person have to say about who God is, the character of God, but we're going right to the words of Jesus Himself about who He says He is. And so today we're, we're focusing on a, a, a phrase he used in John chapter 11. It, in verse 25, it reads as this, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. That's what we're going to be focusing on today. The resurrection and the life. Now, those are, we're kind of doing a two for here. These past couple weeks, we've been doing one at a time. I'm the, the bread the gate, the good shepherd. Now, you, you get a two-for-one special here, so sit back, relax, as we kind of break this down. And I want to share a story of, of a testimony that's not mine, but it's one that I've heard that I found it very interesting that there's this young man uh, who had a, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? A, a, a heart infection, a chest infection that was going to cause and ultimately lead to his death. He, he was this was a, a, a mortal infection, if you will. If it, this was not taken care of quickly, he would die. And, and because of this being back in America and the woes of our healthcare system and insurance, the, the surgery to fix it kept getting postponed and postponed and postponed. And this guy was a believer. He, he'd been around the block before. He'd gone to many people like pastors that their whole ministry was geared towards healing. And he'd go and they're saying like, guys, the, the most beautiful prayers you've ever heard, like soliloquy, sonnets, Shakespeare level stuff. And the infection's still there. And he's, he's kind of getting down of like, what's the deal, God? I, I feel like I'm doing what, what these pages tell me to do and it's not working. And so he goes to, to visit some family uh, and he goes to a church, um, and somebody comes up to him and says, hey, we heard that, you know, you're really looking to be healed. There's, there's a, a, an elderly man here that he's interested. He wants to get into healing ministry and praying specifically for, for healing. Uh, do you mind coming? And, and he meets this older gentleman, and from the phrase of the guy, the, the, the man with the sickness, the chest infection, he says that old man prayed the worst prayer he's ever heard before. Um, he said that he just repeated things that didn't need to be repeated. He stumbled over his words. It was too short. It didn't really feel very topical. He said it was the worst prayer he's ever heard. But as that man was praying over him, he felt a warmth bloom in his chest. And he, he said he went back down to his seat and he's like, God, okay. God did, was it? He said, he went back down to see him. He said, God, did you, did, did you actually just heal me just then? With that guy? That's, that's the guy. That's the guy you chose. Not, not the, the big name, if you will, but that guy? I want to tell you a second story, and this is a, a more personal one for me. Um, I was a young man once, a, a, a man about town, if you will, as a teenager, um, and I was going to take this girl out on a date, um, and I was, I was interning for my church at the time. I was 17. I was a summer intern, uh, and we were having an early morning prayer session followed by some, uh, some preparation because I was going to get to preach for the first time in a couple weeks, um, and I was going to go out to lunch and like a, a picnic thing with this girl for the first time, um, and, and the church is on the street and like 300 feet away is a stoplight and she's going to come by, pick me up and she, uh, she's making a left hand turn. So remember this is in America. So for you, it'd be like a right hand turn. 
and somebody ran the red light, hit her car. It, we were, I was waiting out in the parking lot. I heard eyes get drawn, like, oh. So I, I, I run on over. I don't know what, what it is, how I can help, but I just I felt drawn, so I go over. I, I see that it's her. I see that the, the paramedics swiftly arrive. I couldn't do anything. So if we arrive, they extract her from the vehicle. She's, she's not looking great. Um, and so I'm like, okay, I, I guess I'll visit her. I'll go get some flowers and I go to the hospital. Um, and I said, hey, you know, can I pray for you? And she's, she's in real bad shape, guys. And I pray for her and I believe. And about four days later, she died. There, there wasn't a healing there. There, there wasn't a, the, the, the moment like that. Where, where was the, the warmth blooming in her chest and her broken body? And so there's this, there's this balance that I kind of want us to keep in mind as we're going forward of Jesus saying He's the resurrection and the life and what that means. So there's, there's this tension that can come with healing. That the Bible, I think, is very clear that healing, it's just not a side effect of Jesus' ministry. It's not, it's not a, a byproduct. It is a staple in the ministry of the Bible from beginning to end. Healing kind of shows up all throughout. It is an integral part. In fact, Jesus commissioned His disciples to proclaim this message of healing, of the kingdom while healing the sick. And that this pattern continues on and on all throughout Paul's ministry. However, healing is not always straightforward, as these two stories hopefully just illustrated to you. It's not always straightforward, and they can intersect at, at our most challenging time, at our darkest time, our deepest painful time, when that when we ask God for healing, we're asking God, can you transform my circumstances? Can you transform my life right now? What's going on? This thing has defined it, and I need you to change the definition. In this transformation, it can be profound, but it can also be challenging. That for some, like that, that young man whose chest infection was healed, that the end of the story is the doctors actually open up his chest to clear out the infection and save his life. And they couldn't find a single cell out of alignment. They hold their head like, uh, we're sorry we had to cut you open. We're, we're sorry for the pain of that. But other than that, we'll see you in six months for a checkup. Like, there's that. It can be so profound. Or for others, like that young girl I was going to take out and her family and for me, that the transformation involves disappointment and grief and, and a dissonance of understanding of God. I thought, but I, God, I said the magic words. I, I did what I did. And so... Theologians can sometimes call this we're, that we're living in the already, not yet. The already, not yet. That in Jesus, we are actively experiencing the victory over sin and death itself. But we await its full consummation at His return. We're living in it, but not yet. We're in it, but not yet. It's, that, it's that, that stretching, that tension, if you will. And Jesus kind of embodies this tension in this victorious Savior and the suffering servant. The already, but yet. And so healing in a church, healing requires a mature and sensitive community around it. It's not willy-nilly. We're not just popping off at the hip. It demands that we hold on to hope and navigate disappointment and trust that God is still the Good Shepherd. That we can 
confidently affirm that God's, God desires healing, that he wants it just as much, if not greater, than we do, that the timing and the manner of the healing can go beyond our understanding, beyond what we see, beyond what we know. That sometimes healing comes miraculous in this life and sometimes the miracle is in the next. That it arrives in eternity. That our faith be anchored in, in not the outcome of the prayer, but in who we're praying to. Is our faith anchored in, like I, I say, God, can you, can you bless me in this way? Can you heal me this way? It doesn't happen. Does our faith get shattered then? Does it, get, does it shake? Is, our, is it built on sand, as the Bible would say? Or is my faith based in who I'm praying to, not on the results of? And that ultimately, healing serves as a signpost pointing towards the person, Jesus, God. That the greater reality of salvation, Jesus, his ministry was marked by both healing and salvation, hand in hand. That he was revealing God's kingdom, breaking into our broken world by changing people's circumstances of where they were. That, that he would change it, that the, the, a physical healing is temporary. I, I got news for you, if you didn't know, we're all going to die. It's, it's one of the, the actual guaranteed promises in the Bible that all men will come to pass. Not in those words, but we're all going to die. We all got a number. It, it, our clock's ticking, every one of us. It's a very morbid thought, but our clock's ticking. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, our clock's ticking. So physical healing is temporary, but Jesus also offers salvation. And salvation goes on into eternity. That, that in the, when, when Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life, this is in the midst of his friend Lazarus dying. This is a family friend of Jesus. He knows them. He knows his sisters. He knows his mom. Lazarus is dead. They come running to him. Jesus, if you had just been here earlier, my man, this would have never happened. They, got, they had faith. There's a little admonishment like, Jesus, maybe if you hadn't done this or that, a man's life wouldn't have you know, passed away. But Jesus goes to them. And He says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in Me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe in this? That's what he says to her. It doesn't matter if that thing in the tomb over there, Lazarus' body, he, he believed in me. He yet lives. You just don't see it. You don't know it. The miracle has happened. Though Jesus says, raise him back from the dead, he goes on. Showing his victory over death, his victory over sickness, his victory over it all, his salvation from that which we fear most, death, he has it. That the salvation presented in Scripture, it's not, it's not just a forgiveness of sin, it's, it's not just a, hey, you're forgiven, like, I'll, you're not going to get uh, any smacks, you're, you're not going to be grounded, you're not going to have to write any lines. It's not just a mere forgiveness of sin, but it is a restoration. It is a redemption that begins at the moment that we accept it. It is a gift freely given the moment that we accept it on into eternity. Forever and ever. That Jesus, when He declared, I am the resurrection and the life, He invites us into a life of fullness and purpose, it assures us that, that through His sacrificial death and triumphant resurrection, all these, this, this huge, phenomenal, universe 
shaking and shattering things that we can experience an abundant life forever. That's salvation. And so this, this intersection of healing and salvation come in and, and it's all part of God's plan. You can't, you can't like separate the two. You can't have one without the other really. That healing accompanies salvation as a sign of God's mercy and a sign of God's power. Yet while healing in this life, it, 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 just, it changes. It changes a person. It can change a community. Healing changes. It's not the ultimate promise though. It's not the end all be all. My, my grandfather died of esophageal cancer. He wasn't healed. And he knew that wasn't the end all be all. That he had a father in heaven waiting for him. That that is the end all. That's the be all. That miraculous healing, like in the story in John chapter 11 where Jesus said this phrase, it, the raising of Lazarus, it, it points to a greater reality, but it doesn't replace it. The circumstances didn't actually change all that much. Lazarus' family kind of went back to normal life. Jesus went back to what he was doing. The community didn't really change all that much as far as we know, but it gives us a taste of God's kingdom. Obviously, it, it changed phenomenally for Lazarus. Boom, he's back in the waking world. But it gives a taste of God's kingdom and his power of restoration to hunger and yearn for more. Hunger and yearn for what's behind that. Who is behind the healing behind the resurrection, that we desire passionately the preview of God when He's offering the whole show. The whole shebang, if you will. And so as, as the church, we are called to embody both. That, that healing of the here and now and understanding that actually it can be a, it's a temporary healing, but the next step is salvation of Jesus coming in and saving us. That in John chapter 11, he shows up that Mary's back home crying and Jesus shows up to her. He starts crying. And it's just, such a beautiful picture in verse 33. It says, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord. They replied. And then 35, the, the easiest verse in the Bible to, to remember, it says, Jesus wept. They were hurting. Jesus saw their hurting. And He joined in. It's so strange to say, but Jesus showed compassion on the people. Though the healing didn't happen. The Bible says Lazarus was sick before he died. The healing didn't happen. And so Jesus steps into a situation He actively did not heal. And he had compassion for the people. And the, the word compassion is co-suffering. Jesus joined in to the suffering of the people. Something he could have taken away with a word. But there's something else going on. There's a deeper healing, a deeper salvation than what the people knew it was going on. And so for us, we should seek healing. Absolutely seek healing. It'll happen. But maybe it won't happen in the way we realize, in the timing we realize, in the way our imagination wanted it to be. But healing is just the preview. Healing is just temporary. 
Because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. We'll all come to die, but we'll be raised to life in eternity. That's the real healing. That's the real deal of who Jesus says He is, that God really is. Is that, yeah, I'll heal your body, but the more important thing is I'll heal this relationship so that you can be with me forever in heaven in eternity, in paradise with our Father. That's who it really is. So when Jesus says, I am the resurrection and life, it fully encapsulates His message. I, I feel like every one of these knowing God statements, you could kind of end the sermon saying, this is the thing, Jesus being the bread fully encapsulates. So I'm going to say it again. Jesus being the resurrection and the life fully encapsulates His, his mission and His promise to us. That His offer of healing isn't just of the body, but it's of everything. Everything. That our faith can rest assured that God is with us, that God is the Good Shepherd, that God is who He says He is, and He's redeeming every part of us. So you may be sitting at home right now needing a healing. You may be knowing somebody, sitting in a situation next to, somebody, next to somebody or connected to somebody that needs a healing. Well, I stand here t today to tell you our God's a healer. When I, when I was 18, I was diagnosed with cancer. I received prayer. I go back for more and more tests and suddenly the previous tests were actually all wrong. Suddenly, there is no tumor. Suddenly, when I was 18 and I, I lost 50 pounds over six weeks and they, I looked emaciated and uh, like a skeleton, they can just say, we don't really know what happened. When all the other tests said that I had cancer, God came in and said, no, you don't. So you may be sitting there with somebody. I can tell you God is a healer. But it's also remember, it can happen in, in a myriad of ways. Because He's not just looking at the body, He's looking at all of it. So let's pray right now. We're going to close our eyes. We're going to take a moment. Let's focus our attention our heart, our mind, our, our body, everything about us. So just focus it on Jesus. You are good, the good shepherd, the bread of life. You are a provider. God, you are everything. Father, and we ask for your miraculous healing right now. In the situation that ultimately you know better than I do. Father, that they may be healed in Jesus' name, that they may know your life, and your resurrection. That they may be healed wholly and fully in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. Please don't... Don't let that go in one ear and out the other. Let it bounce around in your head. Let it echo in your heart. Let it, let it just sit with you for a moment as we're continuing to know God by His own words, by who He says He is in His heart. As we continue on in this series, we'll, we'll see you next week. Uh, until then, I, I'm Dustin Pruitt. Just uh, wishing you a wonderful summer, more sunshine, more warmth. 
uh, and everything good about it. But until next time, bye.